A portion of this video is sponsored by Discover Data Science, powered by Wiley. More on them in just a moment. In this video, I'm going to show you how you could build your first machine learning model in Python, and we're starting right now. So we're going to build our first machine learning model in Python, and we're going to do that using the scikit-learn library. And the coding environment that we're going to use is going to be Google Colab. It's free, and it's quite powerful. And so let's fire it up. So typically when I create projects on Google Colab, one of the first thing that I would do is I would give the notebook a name. So we're going to give it a name of first project. And the next thing is I like to add documentation or text to the notebook. So I'll add a text cell here and move it up or you can also adjust the location of it by using the down button here. And then I'll double click here and I'll click on this button, which is the equivalence of a hash symbol, which will give the text a heading one. If you have two of it, it will be a heading two. So the great thing about using headings is that it allows you to neatly organize your Jupyter notebooks. So I'll show you. So here, we're also going to make the text bold my first ML project. And we're going to use two hash symbol, or you could click this button twice, and then I'll also make it bold. So typically, we're going to start the project by loading in a data set. So let's find a data set to analyze. And for that, we're going to the GitHub of Data Professor. And if you scroll down, one of the pinned repository will be called data. Click on it. And then there's a lot of data sets here that I have compiled over the years as a content creator. So a reasonably simple and unique data set that I would like to use here is the Delani data set. And I think it's this one. Let me have a look. Okay, so this is a data set of the solubility of molecules, and they are important in the fact that they are crucial for biologists and chemists in determining whether a molecule is soluble in water or solvent, and whether they will be good drug candidates. And so let's have a look here. You can see that the data set here is in the format of a CSV, and essentially it is a comma separated value file. So if you click on the raw link here, you're going to see the native file. Let me zoom in. And you're going to see that the first row will comprise of the names of the columns. And each word that you see here is the name of the column. And it represents a single cell. And then you have the comma to separate it. And therefore, the first word here and the second word here and the third word and etc. are separated by commas. Therefore, hence, they are called comma separated values because the comma will separate the values. And so here, how many columns do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five. So we have five columns. And then we have correspondingly from lines two until the end of the file, they represent our data sets. And so typically what I like to do is I normally will put the Y variable or the dependent variable, or you could also call it the output variable or the Y variable. So there's so many names for it. And so they are the variable that you want to predict as a function of the X variables, which are the ones here that are highlighted. So you might be familiar with the equation of Y equals to F of X, right? So y is the last column here, the y variable, equals to the function of x. So we have several x here. So it is a multivariate analysis, okay? So what we want to do is we're going to import this particular data set. So I'll click here on the raw link, and then I'll click here in the address bar, right click and click on copy. And now we're going to read in the data set into the Jupyter Notebook. So the Python library that we're gonna use in order to do that is called Pandas. And so we're gonna import it as follows. 
import pandas as pd. So pd is sort of a alias for the pandas library. So from here on, we're going to call pandas as pd, as mentioned here. And then we're going to read in the data set in the CSV format. And then we're going to assign it to a variable called df. And df is an acronym for a data frame. So let's do it. We're going to type in PD because we want to use pandas. And then we're going to use the function from pandas library called read CSV. And then as the input argument, which is inside the parenthesis, we're going to type in the address of the file. Or you could also type in the file name. So you can see here that we could directly read in the data set from the URL that we had just copied from GitHub. And so let's do it. And then once read in, we're going to print it out by typing in DF. And then I'm going to hit on the play button here to run the cell. And so because it is just loading, you're going to see that it's connecting. So it's going to take a short moment. It's initializing and now it's connected and now we're ready. Now you can see the RAM and the disk that are assigned to this particular cloud computing unit that we have here in the notebook. All right, and so once you have run the cell, you're gonna see the output, which is right here, which you could also close if you don't wanna see it again, or you could play it again to display it again. So we're gonna see the contents of the CSV file in the tabular format here. You're gonna see here that the first column here that you see is the index number. So officially it's not a column, so it is the index name. And here you're gonna see the columns, moloch p, mo weight, num rotatable bonds, aromatic proportion. So these four variables represent the x variables. And so when we build a machine learning model to predict the y variable or the log s, and therefore log s is equal to the function of all of the x variables here. So in other words, we're gonna use the four variables here to make a prediction on the log s variable, okay? And so the next thing that we want to do here now is that we wanna split the data frame into the x and into the y. And so let's do the most simplest thing is to obtain the y variable. So let me show you. I'll create some text cell. I'll make it bold. Data preparation. So we have here the first level here, one hash symbol. We have here two hash symbol. This is Let's make it two hash symbol. Let's make this three because we want it to be a subsection of this one. And so we're going to call this data split, data separation or data separation as x and y. Okay, and so we're going to create the Y and we're gonna type in DF and the name of the last column here is log S. So that's how we're gonna get the Y. And let's see, okay, and these are the Y, log S. And now we want to get only the X variables. So we want to remove the log S. So we're gonna do that, type in X equals to DF dot drop parenthesis. And then we're going to see, we wanna drop log S and we wanna have it axis equals to one because axis equals to one will allow the drop function to work with the data as column mode. However, if you use axis equal to zero, it will work it in the row mode. Let's see if that's correct. It is correct. You see that the log S is now gone and that we have four columns here. And prior to that, we have five columns. So the number of rows remain the same at 1,144. So now we have X and Y in the separated form. So the next thing that we want to do is we're going to split the data set. We're going to split it as the training set and the testing set. So let's do it. So remember how many we need? We need three hash symbols here. So we're going to add text cell, click it three times, and then type data splitting. And we're going to use the scikit-learn package for that. So you want to type in from sklearn.model underscore selection. And then you want to import the train test split, train test split. And now we're going to type in x train, x test, y train, y test equals to train test split, x and y. And we're going to have the test size to be 0.2 and let me see I want to have the random state to be assigned a specific number so that every time I run the code cell I will get the same data split so we're gonna have random state equals to let's say 100 and now we're gonna run it so we should now have four new variables here and let's have a look at the x train 
and we see that we have 915 rows and four columns. Let's have a look at X test. We have 229 rows and also four columns. So X test or X train will come from the X variable. So we started out with 1,144. And so 80% of 1,144 is 915. And 20% of 1,144 is 229. And so the training set here will have 80% of the data and the X test here or the test set will have 20% of the data. And I've actually written a blog post about this particular topic of building your machine learning model in Python using scikit-learn. And I've drawn several illustrations explaining about the data split. So let me go and let me show you. And it's this article, How to Build a Machine Learning Model, A Visual Guide to Learning Data Science. So here we have the X and Y that I mentioned already, and I've color coded here as orange and pink for the X and Y, respectively. Scroll down, and here, here's the data split. So here you have the initial data set, and then you perform data splitting, where 80% of your data will go into a container that you call the training set, and then the remainder or the 20% will go to a container that you call the testing set. And the typical ratio is 80 to 20% for the training set and the testing set. So typically we use the training set to build a model and then we wanna use the testing set to serve as sort of a unknown data that you wanna test training set for. You wanna evaluate whether the model that you have built using the training set, whether it performed in a robust manner against an unknown data that you simulate using the testing set, okay? And so before continuing further, a quick word from our sponsor. And so a short message from our sponsor, Discover Data Science, powered by Wiley, which is the premier information hub for the field of data science, with in-depth guides on careers, degrees, and industry-leading programming languages Discover Data Science's goal is to provide accessible resources and materials for prospective students and professionals. Through Discover Data Science expert-driven articles and publications, you'll learn more about which data science degrees help accomplish your professional goals, the tools and skills that are necessary for a successful career in the field, which career paths appeal to your personal interest, how to land a job in data science. And as you know, data science jobs are rapidly expanding on a global scale with a growing need for qualified data science professionals. It's never been a better time to earn your degree and pursue a career in this rewarding field. You can begin your data science journey by visiting discoverdatascience.org powered by Wiley or visit the link in the description below. All right, and so let's continue with the tutorial. Okay, and now we're going to build the model. So let me add a text cell and I'll add here to be two hash. We'll make it bold. Let's call it model building. And here we're gonna add another one. We're gonna say linear regression. Let's have it as three hash. We have two here, we have three here. So we have it in a hierarchical form. So if you click here, you're gonna see the table of content of your code. And so the benefit of organizing your text cells in hierarchical form is that you could see the table of contents here. And then you could click through the various sections. So actually, instead of making load data having two hash symbol, I'm gonna make it into having one. So it's gonna be the same as the title. And then you're gonna see that this one moved to the left a bit. And then we're gonna make uh, data preparation to be one as well, one hash. We're gonna make data modeling to be one hash like that. And now we're gonna make data separation to be two, data splitting to be two, linear regression to be two. Okay, and now it looks good to me, okay? And now we're gonna continue by populating the code cell underneath the linear regression. 
So we're going to use scikit-learn from sklearn.linear model import linear regression. So you're going to see here that scikit-learn has several functions that you could use not only to prepare your data set but also to build a machine learning model. And here we're going to build a typical linear regression model. And now that we have imported the function, we're going to create a variable called LR to stand for linear regression. We're going to type in linear regression function here which will be represented by LR. And and then on the next line, we're going to run lr.fit, which means that we want to train the empty linear regression model on the following data set, which we specify to be x-train, comma, y-train. And then we run it. You could click here, or what I like to do is I like to use the keyboard, shift, enter, which is quicker for me, and the model is built. And now that the model is built, we want to apply this particular model to make a prediction. So let me add the text here so that we could annotate it a bit more. We could say training the model to make it bold. Applying the model to make prediction. And we're going to call it y underscore lr underscore train underscore pred. So we're going to apply the model to make a prediction on the training set. And the prediction to notify that, we're going to use pred. And then to make note of the algorithm that we're using to train the model, we're going to specify to be lr here. And then we're going to start with the y underscore. So this naming convention will be helpful when we have several machine learning algorithms that we want to try out and also whether our prediction is made on the training set or the testing set. So type in lr.predict and then I'm going to specify x train to be the data because we want to make the prediction here on the x train. So essentially we're going to do the recall. It's going to be making prediction on the original data set that it has been trained on. And so that will allow us to evaluate the performance of the algorithm. So here we're going to call it y underscore lr underscore test underscore pred equals lr dot predict and as you've guessed y underscore test. Let's do it. Let's print out the results. Y underscore lr train pred y underscore lr test pred. Actually, let's just make it like that. Okay, so these are all of the predictions. Have a look here. So these represents the 80% of the data. And there you go, the remainder 20% has been predicted. And we have the predicted value. And the next part here is we're going to compare the predicted value with the original value or the actual value. And we're going to call the new section here to be model performance. We're going to say evaluate model performance. Because we want to compare X train here. No, not, not X train. Y train with the here. Y LR train. So you're going to notice that they are the actual value and the predicted value. Okay, so in just a moment, I'm going to show you a scatter plot of these two values and if they lined up in a diagonal trend line and see whether they have high dispersion or low dispersion. So if the dispersion is low, we will expect that the performance will be good. Okay, and so now that we see the data that we are going to use, we're now going to actually perform the model evaluation. Let me delete it here first. Lead, delete, delete. at the code cell and we're going to type in from sklearn.metric import mean underscore squared underscore error and we're going to use the r2 score function l r underscore train mean squared error equals to mean squared error function y train underscore y l train cred and so these are the two variables that we have taken a look just a moment ago and now we're going to calculate the mean squared error we're going to calculate the squared correlation coefficient using the r2 score function y train and so you've guessed y l r train pred and so these two blocks are for the training set now we're going to do the same for the testing set mean squared error y test r underscore test pred l r test r2 equals r2 score 
and we have y test and the y l r test underscore print. Run it. Let's run the values here. Okay, they're reasonably similar performance here. So we could tidy it up a bit by saying the LR MSE and then we say training or to train equal or colon print and then we're going to have this one here. We're gonna reuse it R2, so that will be R train R2 is here and now we're gonna train this to be test. Test. This would be test. This would be test. Okay. There you go. So instead of having four of these, we're going to delete them. So you could highlight multiple cells just by highlighting it. And then you could click on either you want to move it or in this case, I'm going to delete them. Okay, so we see all of it at a glance here. However, we could tidy up this particular layout a bit more. Let me show you our results. And then we're going to create a pandas data frame. We're going to call this linear regression lr train me lr train r square lr test mse lr test underscore r2. And then we're going to transpose it. And let's have a look. Looks like that. And now we need to change the column names here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So what we want to do here, LR results dot columns. And we're going to rename it. We're going to call the first column to be method. Second column to be training MSE. And then we have training R square. And then we have test MSE. And then we have test r squared. Run it. There you go. It looks much cleaner, much cleaner than this in a tabular form. And so the great thing about having it in a pandas data frame like this is that if you evaluate more and more machine learning models like random forest, k nearest neighbor, support vector machine, neural network, then you're going to have a data frame that will allow you to easily compare. You could also sort by column the performance and that will help you to evaluate which one was the best. So here you have already built a linear regression model. And we're going to try out another one, which is the random forest. Let's see, we have two hash symbol here. So we're going to add a text cell, add two, and then we're going to call it random forest. Random forest. And then you can see it here. But notice that you don't see the bold text because it needs to be in a hash symbol, which will give it a heading one, heading two, heading three, you know, like the hierarchical ordering. So if you want this to appear here, then we need to add more. So this is two, then we need to make three here. Add three, and you're gonna notice it appears here. Add three. It might be good because you could also, you know, hop around the notebook like this, you know, like click on the various topic of your choice, and then you could skim through your Jupyter notebook. And also the great thing is that you could take a look at your table of content without, you know, scrolling up and down to see what's the name of the cell because sometimes your output might be quite long here and it might take some time, right? But it'll be much quicker to just navigate by clicking on the particular link. So we could see here that we have training the model here. So we could just add a section called training the model, training the model, and then let's just add the headings and then apply the model to make a prediction then have evaluate model performance so we could move this up a bit so we're going to train the model using the random forest algorithm so from sklearn dot ensemble import random forest regressor so a pointy note here is that this particular tutorial video makes use of regressor because we're building regression models and it is because the y variable which is called log s let me show you log s right here it's a quantitative value so if the y variable is quantitative we're going to build a regression model whereas if it is categorical then we're going to build a classification model okay so in this tutorial the log s is quantitative therefore we built the regression model because random forest here has two versions random forest regressor and random forest classifier 
and here we're using the regressor. So we're going to create a RF variable to house the random forest algorithm and we're going to specify some of the parameters for the model here. Maximum depth of 2 and the random state of what about 100 because in the prior random state we used 100. And now we're going to train the model. So we're going to type in RF fits and then we're going to use X train and Y train. And then we run it to train the model and the model is trained. We're now going to make the prediction in here. So actually we could just copy the code cell above here. Scroll down. And we're going to change this to be RF. RF. LR to be RF. RF. And now it looks correct to me. And we're going to run it. Okay. And now we're going to do the model performance evaluation. I'm going to copy the code here paste it. We're going to use the mean squared error and we're going to use the R2 score. And here instead of LR, we're going to replace that to be RF. Okay. So replace all of the LR to be RF and be mindful. Maybe you might type in wrong like me just a moment ago to be FR. So RF here will be RF. LR here will be RF. RF and R. Did I say RF just a moment ago? I meant to say LR and now it's RF. Okay. Let's run it and let's copy the code here which we use to make the table and we're gonna change this to be rf again and this will be random forest rf okay and here rf show the table okay and now we have two tables we have the linear regression table and we have the random forest table so why don't we combine the two tables together okay let me create another level see what level is this random for us with the two hash so one two model comparison and now we're going to compare it so we're going to combine the two results table into one and let me see df models equal pd.concat and then i'm going to specify the name of lr results and rf results see do i have x equals to zero because I want to combine it in a row wise manner. Let me try it. if it works. All right, it worked. Yeah, so x is equal to zero if you want to combine in a row wise manner. Whereas if you use x is one, it will be in a column wise manner. So here we're stacking them on top of one another. Okay, so you can see now that the two are in the same table, but then the index number is a bit off. So we need to re index that. So let me see if it's as simple as doing this re index. Okay, and then it also added a new column here. We just say draw equal true. Oh, and now it worked. We could have also added this at the back of here. Run again, and the number is correct, okay? But I'm just gonna separate it so that it looks a bit more tidy and you could see it. But you know how to make it into a one liner. You could just copy here and paste it at the end here. So here you can see that we have already compared linear regression model and the random forest model. Let's have a look at the scikit-learn. Okay, and if you click here regression, and so here you could find other regression model that you like and you could use it to build your own in the Colette notebook here. And then you could then add the resulting performance into the data frame here to make your comparison. And so now we're going to perform data visualization to take the predicted value and the actual value and make a scatter plot. Let's do it. Let's say data visualization of prediction results. And we're going to make use of the matplotlib library. So we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Let's say plt scatter we're gonna assign to the x-axis y train and to the y-axis b l r train pred and let's make plots okay this is our first attempt let's make it a bit lighter you could adjust the darkness of the samples that you see here that are represented by the circles using the alpha option we're making alpha to be 0 0.3 so that regions that are highly overlapping will be a bit darker whereas those that are not overlapping will be lighter color and you're gonna see that the x and y axis is not yet labeled we're gonna do that plt y label predicted log s s t f label experimental 
control S. Okay, now we have the labels here. Why don't we make it uh, same width and height? Make fixed size to be five and five. Okay, why don't we make the dots here to be another color, C color option, and we're going to use color green. And what about a trend line? Let's add a trend line. For that, we're gonna use NumPy. Get the fitted line, creating a Z variable, NP dot polyfit. And then the Y train and then the LR train pred P equals Z train each. Then we're going to color to it. 7, 60. Okay, there we go. So we added this red line as trend line that are fitted with the data here. And so congratulations, you built your first machine learning model in Python using the scikit-learn library. So you can see how easy it is now to build models in Python, particularly for your tabular data sets. And so please feel free to build more models and you could tweak the learning parameters. And as I have shown you this API documentation from scikit-learn, you could go through the documentation. You could click on an algorithm that you're interested in, read about it, and then look at some of the parameters that it allows you to adjust. And so give it some try. Let me know in the comments down below what models that you are building and have fun. Thank you for watching until the end of the video. If you reached this far, drop a snake emoji so that I know that you're the real one. And while you're at it, please smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, make sure to turn on notifications to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.